Okay, hey guys, we're gonna give everyone another six minutes. So make sure you got the paper ready um, and you're ready to discuss. Good morning, everybody, welcome. So if you wanna put your name in the chat as a little attendance, that would be great. Um, and also let me know in the chat if you are having issues with your audio and unable to speak, just so I know that ahead of time. Um, otherwise, this is gonna work like the last few literature discussions. I'll give a topic or a question and then I'll call on somebody and expect them to be able to unmute themselves and answer the question. So again, put your name in the chat. And then again, let me know if you're gonna have some audio issues and you would prefer to type your responses in the chat. Okay. Michaela, you don't have audio. Okay, so Michaela, when I call on you, I'll give you like a little lead time um, and you can type your answers, that's totally fine. Okay, um, let me share my screen here. Okay, so we're here in our class 10 agenda. I just wanna go over a few things that are, um, Haley, you don't have audio either. Okay, so Haley and Michaela, you guys can type, totally fine. Um, let's go over a few things that are coming due from um, like the last week module and then coming up this week. So if we remember last week we had our mask lab and so due tonight is the write up so far for the mask lab. So that's gonna include the methods, the results, the discussion, as well as those pre-lab questions, the questions that are in that lab handout. So those are due for the mass lab tonight. And the other thing that's due is your peer review of the reaction time lab. So again, um, you have those two things. Now, on your Canvas, if you pull up your Canvas page, on the right, I have a to-do list of all the things I have to grade, um, but you should see your peer review pop up here. So it'll have all the things that you still have to do for the class. Um, and so if you ever like, where'd my peer review go? I don't, I don't know where the peer review is. It's here, it's on this to-do list. Um, you'll also get a notification and depending on how you have your notification set up, it might be like a push notification on your phone or it might be an email. It just depends on what you've made your settings for notifications on Canvas. But either way, you'll have it here on your to-do list. Now, if your to-do list is long, it only shows you the first few things. And so you might have to hit the X um, and like X out of some other to-dos in order to see that to-do, um, but it will be here. Okay, so keep in mind, we've got that mask lab and the peer review, and then eventually you will have to peer review the mask lab. Now, this week, we're working on our last literature discussion, and then you'll write up the summary and analysis for that. And then your at-home assignments are to learn about introductions and abstracts, and then write up a draft of both of those lab reports. Um, you should have received an email from me last week with your peer who you are assigned to, um, to give feedback for your lab reports. And so next week in our class time, so next Wednesday, I'll put you guys into breakout rooms. And what you're gonna do is give someone feedback on their drafts. And so before next Wednesday, you'll need to email the reports to the person or people that I assigned you with that email, um, giving them the drafts of your reports, um, read them before coming to class, and then in class you'll be able to provide some feedback um, based on that. Okay, so let's get started then. Again, we're in our class 10 agenda. Um, so if you guys wanna take the class 10 attendance quiz and then give me on a scale, let me make sure it's open because yeah, it is, okay. <laughs> and give me on a scale of one to 10 what you think of the paper that we had to read. Uh, one being garbage, 10 being the best thing I've ever read. Um, and when you do that, to stop sharing briefly. So give me on a scale of one to 10, what, what you think. And I'm also gonna open up a poll. Um, and so then after you do the quiz, then answer the poll and tell me what you think and we'll get a little um, gauge of what, where the class is. So again, class 10 attendance quiz, one to 10, what do you think? And then do a little anonymous poll here. What do you think of the paper? Great. Okay. Okay. 
Okay. So people seem to be about a seven. I would say a little less than a seven if we're going by the average. The highest, the, the most people, or three out of the group, said a seven, and then we have a five and a three. Okay. So, you know, kind of mixed. I would say mixed. Okay. So again, if you're just joining us, please put your name in the chat and then also let me know if you have audio or not. If you don't have audio, I will call on you and you'll type. If you do have audio, I'll call on you and you will speak words from your mouth via an un unmuted microphone. Okay. Let me pull up the little PowerPoint here for our literature discussion. Okay. So let me make sure this is, don't use topics. Okay. Um, so we're on our last lit review, our last literature discussion for the class. And so we started with two papers that were written by undergraduates and published in undergraduate journals, and they were really straightforward. So they involved a simple experimental setup and um, they were written pretty clearly. And maybe the experiments weren't perfect or as well thought out as they could be, but it was pretty straightforward and, and easy to read. Then last time, our last literature discussion, we read that paper about cocaine, and it was a little bit more complicated, but it was on that website that allowed the glossary so you could look up some key terms. Um, but what I wanted to do for this paper is to bring in literature that is really relevant, right? Everyone's talking about COVID and, and vaccines with, with good reason, and I wanted to show you guys that you are capable of reading the primary literature that is coming out now about something that people are talking about. So when you hear a news article or you hear people talking about a study that came out, you are fully capable of going and finding that study and reading the paper and understanding, even if you don't understand every single word or every single figure, you are capable of understanding the gist of that paper and, and the main points and what they're trying to show. Okay, so this is um, the paper we're going to talk about today is how oh, we're going to analyze and critique a paper. So it's this one, it's evaluation of mRNA 1273 vaccine against SARS-CoV-2 in non-human primates. The other thing I want you to notice about this paper is that where our last ones had two, three authors, this one has a bunch of people, right? All of these people were working probably full time on this project. Um, and that's based on the amount of resources that people have been um, devoting to finding a vaccine, right? Um, we have teams and teams of people all coming together um, and really working nonstop to try to get this data out there and to get um, something that will work. So I think that, that just the, the, the list of names I think is astounding. The other thing I want you guys to know about this paper is it's published in the New England Journal of Medicine. And New England Journal of Medicine is considered the premier medical journal um, for the United States. The British have their own, it's called The Lancet, which is also a very um, high tier journal. But New England Journal of Medicine is like the gold standard for medical research. So the things that they publish, you can be rest assured that they've been looked at by some of the, the top experts in the world. And so it, you can really feel pretty comfortable when you read something that's published here. Okay, so I'm gonna get, go over a few key concepts that the um, paper talks about and then we'll dive into it. So this is talking about obviously COVID-19 and they're trying to create a vaccine. And there are multiple different types of vaccines that um, different groups are trying. I think it's really great that everyone is trying all sorts of different approaches. Um, and this one is an mRNA vaccine. So it's, it, it's easy to make, it's easy to synthesize because it's just um, a short oligonucleotide sequence. Um, and what they're doing is they're gonna be measuring the immune response to the vaccine. And so ideally when you give someone a vaccine, they're gonna mount a measurable immune response, but they won't have an over response to the immune system, right? So the immune system is something that it can be hard to keep in balance. So you wanna have a response, but not an over response. So we're gonna talk about antibodies. And then the last thing to, you, to note is when they say non-human primate model, they mean monkeys. Um, it's a fun way of saying it in the science field is non-human primate, um, but they mean monkeys. And the macaw monkeys that they use are smaller. They're um, easier to store is, is probably not the best way to phrase it, but it's true, they're, they're smaller monkeys. Um, and so they did have to use monkeys in this study. 
statistics that they use, they talk about a few. So they did a Mann-Whitney test and they started by comparing a high dose to the control. And then if that was significant, they went down to the lower dose to the control. And then a Kruskal-Wallace test, which measures correlation. So are these two variables um, related to each other or not? Okay, so let's talk about the introduction. Um, let's see, who do, we, who do we have on the chat? Here we go. Okay, Christina. Do you want to tell us about just their introduction, um, what kind of background information they've provided? Um, yes, they talked about uh, first how like uh, vaccines are needed for COVID-19 mm -hmm. and what are needed uh, to work against the proteins that are found in the vaccine and they gave examples. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and, what, was their, what was the goal of their study? to find the vaccination for COVID. Yeah, exactly, exactly, okay. Um, Haley, in the chat, do you wanna type out why they were using monkeys? What was the rationale for using monkeys? And while um, Haley does that, Ify, do you wanna tell us about some of their methods that they're using? Ify, can you hear us? Okay, we're, we'll, we'll come back to you. I'll assume you need to type things. Kristen, can you tell us about some of their methods? Um, I'm trying to think of them. Uh, they synthesize, they sequence, optimize mRNA encoding perfusion. Mm -hmm. So they made the uh, mRNA against the, the spike protein, right? Yeah, in future. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kylie, what do you think of their methods based on just your, you know, your knowledge, whether you're well versed in immunology or not? Do you think they were written clearly? Do you think there's anything they could have done different or better? Um. They, I know, uh, they like tested before and after, which is obviously like they have to do that to determine it. But I'm not well versed in immunology, but from what I saw, it looked like they had pretty good methods mm -hmm. to determine like the outcome of their tests. Yeah, yeah, and we'll talk about it as we work through. So they um, detailed a lot of different methods, um, and again, it's hard to understand all of the nitty gritty details unless you're in the field. I totally get that, okay. So the methods that they talked about, they talked about the mRNA production, right? So they made this um, sequence optimized mRNA that was against that spike protein and then they purified it. So they were dealing with just the mRNA and they put it in a lipid nanoparticle because you want things to get through cells and um, membranes need that lipid in order to take in any sort of mRNA. They use the macaw monkeys, um, and again, they had 12 of each, females and males in a small age range, and they sorted them by sex, age, and weight. And so what they're going to do is they're going to give them the vaccine at either a high dose, a low dose, or PBS. And PBS is just um, a science way of saying saline solution. So that's their negative control. They don't expect to see any benefit from saline, okay? And then the experiments that they did, they quantified the amount of viral RNA um, using PCR, which is the method. If you are to go and get um, a little nasal swab, that's what they would do as well. Um, let's see. Primates were outbred and more similar to humans in the immune response. Exactly, Haley. So why did they use monkeys? They're more similar to humans. A lot of times in experiments, um, the animal model most researchers choose is mice. The reason they didn't choose mice here is because, like Haley said, um, the immune response for primates is very similar to humans. Um, but for mice, their immune system is actually very different. So it's really hard to test any sort of vaccine that requires an immune response in mice. You kind of have to go all the way up to monkeys, unfortunately. 
Okay. So they also did some histopathology of some lungs. So they took a few of the subjects and they sacrificed them and they removed lung tissue. And then they looked to see, was there COVID infection in their lungs? They also compared different antibodies with ELISAs, which measure the amount of antibodies. And they did some cytokine staining, which will tell us about the immune response. Okay, awesome. So let's talk about the results. So um, Michaela, you can start typing what you think about um, figure one, part C and D. And Raquel, do you wanna tell us about parts A and B, what, what this part shows? The faint lines, it says that uh, those represents the individual animals. Mm -hmm. And then the bold lines represent the mean. Exactly. And from figure A, what do you notice about the mean response for a 100 microgram vaccine versus the 10 microgram vaccine? It's higher. Yeah, so what they call this, this is called a dose response, where you see the higher dose has a higher response. And that's good. That's showing that your vaccine is doing something so that if you give more vaccine, you're getting more response. So that is um, considered a, a good thing for their virus here, or sorry, for their vaccine. And what they're measuring is serum response. So they're measuring the antibody production in response to the vaccine. And what are they measuring in B, Raquel? Raquel? The antibodies? Yeah, the neutralizing antibodies. So the good thing about this paper is that they measure things in multiple different ways. So they're not just looking at, do you have antibodies, but they're looking to see um, what are those antibodies doing in the person? Okay, Michaela. Are you typing for C and D right now? Hopefully. So while you do that, I'm gonna talk about E and F a little bit. So um, E and F, E they're looking at that ACE2 binding. So they found that good vaccines will target this certain viral receptor. And so if we look on the Y axis, they're measuring the reduction in that, that binding to this receptor, this viral receptor. And then in gray here, we've got the saline control. So they have no binding to the receptor, which makes sense. The 10 micrograms of the low dose vaccine has some binding. Then the high dose vaccine has even more. So again, we're seeing a dose response here, which is, re which is um, important showing that their vaccine is working. Um, Michaela says, comparing the binding to specific immunoglobin four weeks after the second vaccination. Yes, exactly. So they're looking how good is this working after the second vaccination, again, you see a dose response. Um, Kylie, what are they measuring? And what are these purple dots? What, is, what are these samples here? Are they the like effectiveness? So like it says, it says like conversion. So these are the convalescent serum samples. So these are the people who got COVID and recovered and we're measuring the antibodies in their blood. And so we're seeing- Okay, that's what I was trying to say that they're the ones that had it and recovered. That's what yeah. I was trying to say. Yeah, I get it. I, it's, you know, science is full of jargon like we've talked about. So I, it's, it's a lot of words. Yeah, so these are the convalescent serum. So these are the people who got COVID and recovered. And you could see, that there's like a wide spread here, right? So they have way different amounts of antibodies. Some of them are, are working still, they're neutralizing antibodies. Some of them are to this receptor protein and some of them are neutralizing live virus. So again, they're testing all of these panels together are showing that the vaccine is able to induce the expression of antibodies, but they show them in multiple different ways, which is again, kind of a strength of the paper that they're testing their hypothesis from multiple angles as opposed to just doing one experiment and, and being done with it. Um, okay, so let's talk about figure two. I will explain a little bit because again, it's a little, it's a little tricky. So what they want is to induce an immune response in the monkeys, but not have an over response to the immune system. So they found in some patients, for example, um, if they have an over-response to the immune system, 
that can also be detrimental. And so what they're looking for in figure A are these T cells that show a good immune response. And they see, again, um, the, 10, the low dose has some um, of these cells. There's none in the control treated, and the high dose has more. The same sort of figure, the same sort of information you're going to get from C and D. Again, you're seeing the immune response with the production of cytokines and interleukins. Um, this is considered a benefit, that they're having a beneficial immune response. What they measured in B was really interesting. So this is where if they have Th2 response with these specific kind of T cells, this would indicate an over-response to the immune system. And so what they're showing is that their monkeys are mounting an immune response um, against this spike protein, but they're not having an over-response of the immune system. Okay. Kristen, do you want to tell us about 3A and B? Like what experiment do they do um, to test their virus against upper and lower respiratory infection? I'm sorry, can you say that again? What was this, do you want to tell us the experiment that they're showing here in figure three? Where it's talking about the different days they took um, samples. Mm -hmm. So what, so it talks about a challenge. What did they do to these monkeys after they gave them a vaccine? What is the challenge? Oh yeah, I was confused about that part. Confused about that part. Okay, so what they did is they vaccinated their monkeys and then they shoved COVID, pretty much like um, tubes with COVID on them, either into their um, trachea, into their lungs, or into their nasal passages. So they were trying to get them infected with virus. This is again a benefit to using monkeys as opposed to humans. You would never be able to do this with people. You would never be able to shove swabs of virus up their nose or down their lungs and like get them really sick but we're working with monkeys and so they were able to do that so the a is showing with that lung challenge and then measuring um the lavage so they washed their lungs a little bit and they measured some of the um viral replication and they saw with saline so people who so monkeys were not given a vaccine they were infected with covid via their lungs um, at two days, at four days, some of them were still infected, and at seven days, most of them were not, were no longer infected. And if they were given a vaccine, it looks like they were mostly able to prevent that two-day infection, except for one. And same with the high dose, right? So the vaccine was able to prevent this response that we see here at two days. With the nasal swab, they were able to infect these monkeys for longer, right? They were still sick two and four days. Um, and because it was a higher amount of infection, the vaccine doesn't seem to be as um, good at keeping down the, the infective rate at 10 micrograms. 100 micrograms seems better, so only a few monkeys were still infected, okay? Um, so that's what the challenge is, is they, they purposely got them um, exposed to the virus and then measured how much virus they could detect. Okay. And so then in the last figure, what they did is they took lung samples and they measured viral RNA. So can they find COVID or viral proteins? Can they find COVID proteins in these lungs? Um, and let's see, Efi, you want to tell us about what they found in this figure? Evie, can you hear us? You need to type. Okay, Raquel, can you tell us about this figure? Okay, that's a long histopathological analysis and viral detections. Mm -hmm. Seven days after they uh, introduced the virus. Mm -hmm. And so. It which samples have detectable viral RNA? The um, images in panel B. Yeah, so this is, this is the zoom in, right? But the only ones that have 
this detectable, you can see here this like staining, right? This coloredness, these detectable viral RNA and antigens were the monkeys who got the saline vaccine, okay? Um, if your audio is going in and out, okay. Um, the ones that got the 10 microgram and the 100 microgram vaccine, they don't have any detectable viral RNA. So it seems, at least from the lung perspective, that the vaccine was able to protect protect them seven days out, which is good. Um, okay, so if, if your, audio, your audio isn't working, you wanna type what, what you thought of this, this experiment, um, whether you thought it was a good experiment or not, and we'll come back to you. Michaela, you can also type at this time what you think of this experiment. And Haley, you can type a little bit about the discussion. Okay, so Ify and Michaela, <laughs> type up your responses to what you think of this experiment. And Haley, type up what you think about the discussion um, as we finish up the paper here. Okay, so while we wait for our typed responses to come in, I'll ask people with sound. So Kylie, what do you, th you think of the paper overall? I thought it was a good paper, especially because the um, vaccines that they did test were proven to be effective. In the monkeys, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, so Kristen, what about you? What did you think of the paper? I liked it. I took an immunology sack, I follow along somewhat, but um, I liked how you know, they explained their concerns for the future of this vaccine, too. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christina, what about you? What did you think of the paper? I liked it as well. I liked the approach that they took and how they broke everything down. Um, what experiment would you like for them to try next? Um, maybe, maybe the same experiments, but maybe they can go in depth with it more, mm -hmm. like testing like the lungs, maybe they can um, test it for longer or... Okay, so see how far out this protection seems to last? Yeah, like if they come back with COVID mm -hmm. or to see something else. Yeah, that's a good idea. Raquel, what kind of experiments would you like to see them try next? I agree with her. They could try um, maybe with the same monkeys and another group with different new monkeys to see how if they react the same way mm -hmm. the uh the ones that they already used reacted got it so like newer vaccine versus an older vaccine mm -hmm. my favorite response good these are all great ideas so um what i wanted you to get from the haley the discussion was good they did a good recap of all the major points good yeah so New England Journal of Medicine puts a word restriction on the introduction. And so um, that's why the introduction was really, really short, but they don't do as stringent of a word count on the discussion. And so when you ever read New England Journal of Medicine, you'll notice the discussion is, is usually where they're able to go into a lot more depth just because they have like the word count for it, um, which is, is nice. Um, okay, so. I'm gonna stop sharing here while we wait for our last few typers. Uh, I'm gonna relaunch the poll again. So now that we've talked about it, you guys can fill out the poll again and let me know what you think of the paper, scale of one to 10. Okay, votes coming in. Okay, so we still seem to put it on a seven, but maybe a slightly higher seven than before. Okay, so if he says the paper was okay, I think they could try other animals to see how effective. That's a good idea. So maybe try maybe other primates or other animal models um, as opposed to just the rhesus monkeys. Okay, awesome. I'm gonna end the poll here. Great, so um, it seems to be about similar, about similar. I understand that this is a very technical paper, um, but again, I wanted to end on a paper that 
I felt like was really topical, was really relevant to show you that you are capable of reading and at least getting the gist, right? Maybe you didn't understand every single figure, every single method, but you understood basically what the paper was trying to say. Um, when you read a paper like this, like a full journal article, again, you want to start with the abstract and read through the abstract and see, is this interesting? Then what I normally do is I look at the figures and I see, can I understand without even reading the paper, what the figures are showing. And then I'll jump to the discussion and I'll try and get their main points. And then I'll go back and read the introduction methods and results. So that's just personally how I read a paper. Um, I usually skim through the methods and only pay attention to things like how many animals or people or subjects did they view and like generally what kind of methods, but I don't read the methods like super in depth just as a, a personal preference here. Um, so again, in the future, you might see news articles, things on social media talking about a study. Studies show whatever. What I really want you guys to get in the habit of doing is, is trying to find that study and going back and reading it and seeing for yourself, like, do you agree with those conclusions? Because oftentimes the blurb that is sent out to the media is written by someone who maybe isn't a scientist, but is a journalist. And so maybe they don't understand all the nitty gritty of the paper, but you having a science background, um, probably more than the journalist person because of the science classes that you've taken might be able to understand it a little bit more. Okay, so let me go back to our Canvas page. So again, what I want you to work on now, um, what would be the remainder of our class time would be the discussion, that summary and analysis for this paper. Okay, so we're down here in week 10. Please submit your completed summary and analysis for the paper we've turned in and then work on those things that are due um, for the mask lab and the peer review that are due today. And then you have drafts due this weekend. Are there any questions people have? No, okay, you guys are good to go. I'll hang out for another minute to answer any last minute questions. Um, otherwise, I will see you next week. Please have your drafts um, and your feedback prepared for next week. Email the person I assigned to you ahead of time read through that person's work and be ready to have that one-on-one um, -on -one breakout room feedback. Have a nice day, thank you. <laughs>